Hello folks, I hope you enjoy this board build for 0200 hours, our little San Nazaire tribute to Operation Chariot. Thanks to our friends over at Sarissa Precision, we have a prize for this vlog series, a £50 voucher for Sarissa's web store. If you want to be in with a chance to win, you can comment below this video. And if you want an extra chance, come over to ontabletop.com and comment on the video there as well, and you'll be quids in. Now sit back and enjoy the build. All right, folks, I'm back without John. Uh, I've given him a week off, which means I can do things like remove this rather than build this up again, like John was talking about. So I have the board out. As you can see, it's still filthy. So the first thing I'm gonna have to do is clean it. And then I'm gonna be getting into touching up these damaged sections and dealing with this water. Now, this water, I don't know how this was done because I wasn't here. However, if I was a betting man, based on the texture and the look, I would say somebody took a heat gun to that, which means we definitely won't be able to match it to this whenever this comes off. So this is all gonna get covered. This will be removed. I'll fix that all the way down so it's level, and then I'll re-level this whole thing with plans to do something else for water effects. Um, I've also discovered that there are some bits of damage that will need to be fixed up as well, like the lock gates have been absolutely hammered. I don't know who did that. Um, but when you're doing any project like this, when you're trying to revamp or repair some terrain, the first thing you need to do is clean it before you do anything else. And I've managed to find Warren's tickling stick. So I'll be removing all the little spiders and their cobwebs from the homes that they have been inhabiting for the last, I'm gonna say six years. Uh, and then cleaning all of this down with a big jug of soapy water. And I'll be back in a minute when this is done and dry and I'm ready to actually start cutting things off and filling things in. Right, everything's scrubbed. All the spiders have been evacuated from their houses. Um, and I'm ready to push on with the next set of things. So I do want to repaint the cobbles and I'm obviously going to repaint the sea because it's like blue sandpaper. I hate it. I hate it so much. But that needs to go away first. And when this goes away, and these chips get repaired, I'm just gonna go ahead and use some all-purpose filler, polyfiller, spackle, if you're in the United States of America. Um, this is the one I use when I'm doing bases as well. And as such, I've mixed craft paint into it. So I've mixed a brown and a black, so like a, a raw umber and a black craft paint. So if it chips, I don't end up with massive white or orange spots like we have at the moment, which is the worst thing in the world. I mean, this this wasn't terrible as far as like a concrete finish goes, but once it takes a ding and I just start seeing orange das shining through, I cry. I cry like baby Jesus. So, spackle will be being used. Uh, ignore the tape here. I have currently have PVA'd this rising door back down. Uh, but all I'm gonna do is just take a knife and then cut that away or cut through until I get down to a level with the sea slash ocean. Um, now, it would be great if I took this off perfectly level. I probably won't. However, if you're gonna cut these things down, if you can't get it, level, don't worry, fill proud and then sand down. Um, you can always take some away. Whereas if you're adding more, it's gonna be a bit of a pain in the backside. I'm assuming that that squeaking there is coming through beautifully for my editor. But unlucky John, your, your mole is going away, but that'll teach you to take holidays whenever I was doing this. So, that's just gonna come off. That will probably come down a bit further. There was some attempt at, I don't know, waves or something here along the front. Um, they're probably all gonna come off as well. 
but I just want to take that off, take this down, and then just grab yourself some form of spreading tool. A butter knife from the drawer. If you don't have a butter knife, uh, you can always get these little crafty things from shops. I have a really nice little arty one as well, which is uh, for my Bob Ross moments. Uh, but just take a big scoop out and then level it in there. This front part where the huge chunk is out of it is gonna be the worst, but I have a plan for that. And my plan is to build a little box section around it uh, using some EPVC and then just fill up. And once it's filled, it'll be squared off. So it may have to dry overnight before I get back to it, but it's just like icing a cake. Get your stuff on there and off you go. And once this is all done, I'll do the remaining board edge. So along the edge of our uh, dock here, currently dry, not necessarily. There's some other big chips and chunks that have come out of this. Uh, they all need to be filled and re sort of grouted. And once that's done, uh, I'll be back to take a look at this. Uh, but that's it for now. I'm off to finish my fudge cake. All right, so first layer of the chocolate batter is down. And I'm gonna have to leave that to dry for a few hours at least, possibly even overnight before I come in to finish it off and then sort the sea. So in the meantime, I decided I'd get whacked into these cobblestones or paving slabs. Um, there were a fair few chips here and there. So I went and blacked those back in. Uh, and then I just ad hoc threw some other bits and pieces on um, as black as well. But what I'm gonna do is sponge color in here because this is just so dark and dead. I hate it. I hate it so much. Um, so I decided I'm going to go for a couple of different colors. I'm just going to sponge it on. First things first, sponge. If you have a artist's sponge, a natural sponge with big lip and holes in it, happy days. If you don't, um, try and get a car sponge. Or in my case, I just got this and pinch, just pinch big circles out of it just to disrupt that base on it a fair bit. You want to make sure that your edges and the light go away so you don't end up with straights anywhere on your uh, spongings. And then after that, it's just a case of picking your colors now. Because this is a really dark charcoal gray, almost black. Well, you can see I've fixed the chips with black in places and the gray is really, really deep beside it anyway. So I wanted more life in it. So I've picked a few different colors. Um, so I grabbed some from the Army Painter, but obviously any will do the job. And if you're doing a lot of terrain, you probably just want to grab some craft colors rather than using your expensive paints on them. However, I've done this thing and I've done this. If I bring this in. So I've got a uh, Monster Brown, Monster Brown, which is a light reddish brown. I've got Venom Worm, which is a olive drab or olive brown. I'm using that mainly for the edges where water would be. I've got a uniform gray. It's a nice dark neutral gray. I say dark, mid-tone for this table. And then finally, I'm going to have an ash gray. Uh, and then I've also got white and black in case I feel the urge. I don't know if I'll feel the urge. I will be finishing it all off with a black wash anyway. Um, but as far as what I'm doing, and you can see I've started to do some here, is just grab a color. So in this case, if I get some of the, what's that, wyvern worm, venom worm. So this is the olivey drabby color. Sponge a bit of it off and then just start stippling with the sponge around the edges where you're going to get moss and the like growing in from the water. So these ones are going to be mostly in and around 
the edges of the sea and around the dock itself. Then I like to put the browns down before I put the greys on top. So I've got some of the, um, the medium grey and the brown on already. And it's just a case of loading your sponge with as much or as little as you like and then dabbing some of it off and then just going in and adding texture and interest is I believe what the kids say. Uh, and just trying to lighten these up a bit because when there's buildings sitting on them, it's like a black empty void that they're laid on to. Uh, and I'm not a home to a black empty void for gaming unless it's a starship. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and mottle the rest of this, like I say, mostly keeping the olive for the edges where the water is and then everything else will just get a paddling of browns and greys. And when that's all done and dry, I'll finish it off with a black wash. So we'll come back for when the wash is going on. All right, I'm back. I've pebble dashed my cobbles. Ooh, our missus. Uh, and the last thing I need to do is put a wash onto it. Now, I've done a jerry can about this before. Um, essentially, this is just a, a cheap black wash using, I've used the Army Painter Matte Black paint, a ton of water, and then a squirt of fairy liquid. Other washing up liquids are apparently available, uh, but what you want it is to be nice and thin and not to leave rings on your table. And if you come down here, uh, at the moment it's all very muddled and blurred, but once I throw this on, you can see it starts to pull away from the high raised areas. So you coat whatever area you're doing liberally, very liberally, and then you grab yourself some paper towels and then you just soak off all the excess, sort of scumbling and dabbing it off. So just like that. You'll probably go through quite a few paper towels when you do this, but that's all right. They weren't doing anything else anyway. So once the whole table's done, it should give me a really nice cobblestone effect um, where you can see, well, you might be able to see here, the outlines of all the paving slabs are just recessed in black and then all the colors are on the top. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that for the whole table. Leave it to dry uh, and then I'll come back to it tomorrow when hopefully all of my chocolate frosting polyfill it as dry as well and we can have a look at the next step. So until then, it'll be a couple of seconds. That was a quick overnight, wasn't it? Look at me go. T-shirt changed and everything. Right, plaster is plastered. Um, I've given it a quick sand down uh, and then because they make me shit in darkness because apparently they hate my eyes and my optician uh, when I put the lights on, I actually found a few more cracks, so I've had to fill those in this morning. But once they're dry, I'll give them a bit of a sand as well. Uh, and then I'll give it a final finish with some texture, so it has that concrete look. This all came off as well, so that's gone. If you're wondering why white, that's just so I don't have to clean the inside of this again after I finish sanding, because uh, I'm very lazy. Uh, that's all dry and has come up quite nicely. I can see all my paving slabs, so the black washes ran into the recesses. Um, could go lighter in places, not going to. Don't wanna, don't wanna gild the lily, as they say. Uh, but the next thing I have to do is the water. And for the water, I'm back to the plaster. Uh, but this time around, I've mixed up a slurry with water, so can you see that? I don't think you can, I think it's pitch black in there, but essentially you just add water to it until it gives you, um, you want it to be thick-ish, like a milkshake, I think is the best way I can describe it. Because when I pour it on, I don't want it just to run straight off. Um, I want it to leave some plaster behind and you will just do that. And then get yourself a sponge which I will do like this. Oh, I'll annoy the cameraman. 
and just I'd go for a sponge rather than a brush because it's just easier to maneuver um, but just let it self-level to a certain extent once the first layer is dry you can go back in and put another layer over the top but I'm just going to go along the whole board and do this to get rid of this unusual sandpaper like texture of sea uh, I want my water to be more water-like and fluid so I'm going to get that done and when I come back I'll have a lovely flat bit of water. All right folks it's been a day actually it's been more than a day because I had other things to do there was weekenders there was all sorts however I'm back to the board uh, I have as you can see schlucked my plaster over the river section it's not enough to cover it will need another one as I thought at the time uh, so I'll have to go back and give that another run over however I want to get this fixed up so I want to have all the cracks and the like textured and done and out of the way so concrete finish on my lovely dry dock um, long time viewers from the channel will know Magimix it is a thing that exists like what the Johnson brothers have done if you're not aware of Magimix I will very briefly explain it but there's a hobby lab vlog you can watch essentially it is some form of plaster of Paris um, this is a powdered form that's best equal amount of PVA with a drop of black paint in it to darken it down because I want some sort of grey thing I never like to have white plaster because if it chips you're done for and then all you do is mix the PVA with your plaster of Paris and you'll end up with a thick plaster mix that's coloured um, it has a bit of texture, a bit of grainage I'm going to have to scrape more out afterwards but all you do is stir it together if you want to you can add a bit of sand or ballast depending on how rough a finish you want so if you're doing rocks or you're doing something that's not concrete or tarmac add some more chunk in but just blend it together like I say equal parts mixy 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 and stirry where are we we're almost there and you'll end up with a grey concretey texture it's got a bit of roughage to it and you can stipple it on with a big brush the bigger the better I've got this brush it's probably smaller than I want but it will do because I'm just doing running repairs on my dry dock uh, so I will be back in a moment when I've concreted the world bye bye all right folks I'm back I'm stippling away like a good gin which is a technical term uh, so I've mixed up my uh, Magi mix this is just the plaster the PVA and a bit of black paint and a little sprinkling of sand that I found in the corner uh, that nobody was doing anything with and all I do is load up a brush and I don't want to load up too much and then I just come in and uh, can you see here boss nice I've got a cameraman who tells me what I'm doing you just want to start stippling it in and then essentially working over it to get the texture you don't want to you don't want this to go on too smooth but you don't want it to go on too lumpy either um, but just work it in to make sure it covers everything and it will very quickly cover up all those chips dents and bits of plaster I had to repair I normally give it one coat and then come back across and just give it another because you'll see in some places it will start to the PVA will start to sort of flatten out at which point I just give it a bit of a stipple with a drier brush there's still some on it and it just gives us this texture the concrete like texture down the whole thing so all it remains is to finish off this edge and then when it's done we'll paint it some relevant concrete color might do the inside edge of this side because there's some polystyrene showing um, yeah I'll probably give it a quick run around the whole inside uh, and then it'll just be a case of 
a wash and some pigments probably to make it look a bit concretey and then to make the inside look like it's been filled with water all mossy and stuff so that's me done for this um i'll get cracking with this and we'll be back when the board's all done and dusted and we can move on to the fun stuff like buildings bye bye Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.